Tesla doesn't need to produce their own 4680 batteries to be able to scale to 20 million vehicles per year by 2030. And if Tesla doesn't meet their production target of producing three terawatt hours of 4680 batteries per year by the end of this decade, they will be fine thanks to their current diversification strategy, which I want to discuss in this video. Um, in fact, as I will discuss, it looks like Tesla has officially started production of a new structural battery pack equipped Model Y that uses LFP batteries from BYD. So stick around as I discuss the state of Tesla's 4680 program and how Tesla has hedged their bets to ensure success even if the 4680 production ramp continues to be slow. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. In past Tesla investor calls, Elon has made it very clear that Tesla plans to continue to buy quite a few batteries from outside suppliers. Um, as they grow production numbers. However, based on what was discussed at Tesla's battery day back in 2020, I don't believe that Tesla originally planned to rely on these suppliers as much as they do now. Their current list of outside battery suppliers includes Panasonic, CATL, LG Energy Solution, and now apparently BYD. Since August of 2022, Tesla has been offering a rear wheel drive standard range version of the Model Y to European customers equipped with lithium iron phosphate batteries from CATL. This variant, however, was not being built at Tesla's German factory like the long range and performance variants are, but rather was being built at Tesla's Shanghai factory and being imported into the European market. However, now Tesla has reportedly started building um, structural battery pack equipped Model Ys, a standard range rear wheel drive version at Giga Berlin. And apparently these vehicles are not equipped with Tesla's 4680 battery cells, but rather lithium iron phosphate batteries manufactured by BYD. This report comes from the German website teslamag.de, and in an article published on May 4th, it was reported that production of a rear-wheel drive standard range Model Y equipped with BYD batteries and a structural battery pack had officially begun at Giga Berlin, and at least two members of the German forum TFF each reported receiving a VIN number for a German-made standard range Model Y. Previously, in August of last year, Tesla Mag reported that Tesla had received EU approval for a BYD battery-equipped Model Y variant, and more recently, on May 6th of this year, that same site reported that the WLTP range of the BYD-equipped um, rear-wheel drive Model Y variant was the same as the CATL battery-equipped version manufactured at Tesla's Shanghai factory, which is listed at 455 kilometers, and that equates to around 282.7 miles of range. Now, when it comes to the type of BYD batteries that Tesla would be using in a vehicle like this that could form some kind of structural component of the car, in case you're not aware, BYD developed what they refer to as blade batteries, which are named for their long, thin, blade-like form factor. These prismatic LFP battery cells are arranged into a battery pack with a very space-efficient cell-to-pack configuration, and when grouped together, the structural nature of the cells um, eliminate the need for traditional support structures in the battery pack. According to BYD, quote, the space utilization of the battery pack is increased by over 50% compared to conventional lithium iron phosphate block batteries. Apparently it's these BYD blade batteries that Tesla is using in this German built uh, standard range rear wheel drive Model Y. And this is allowing them to have another structural battery pack besides the 4680 equipped structural battery pack that they manufacture right now at Gigafactory Texas. Hopefully more information will come out in the future on this specific variant and maybe someone will get their hands on this vehicle and be able to do a teardown, an engineering teardown and analysis. But nonetheless, um, it's exciting that Tesla has been able to incorporate apparently these battery cells into another structural pack version of the Model Y to kind of fill in the gaps um, there at Gigafactory Berlin. As I have been reporting for some time now, Tesla has been working through um, a number of manufacturing issues over the last couple years as they have been attempting to mass produce their Tablus 4680 battery cells. 
One of their biggest engineering hurdles appears to be their dry electrode manufacturing process, which seems to be working better on the anode side of the battery rather than the cathode side for unknown reasons. Tesla even recently hired a new director of dry electrode development to help work through various engineering issues in the process. Once Tesla is able to work through the various engineering issues and reach somewhat of a level of mass production of their Generation 2 4680 batteries at Gigafactory Texas, then and only then, in my opinion, does it make sense for them to start installing new equipment at Gigafactory Berlin, Giga Nevada, and Giga Shanghai, for example. So while I'm pretty certain Tesla had already hoped to be building 4680 equipped structural battery pack versions of the Model Y at Gigafactory Berlin by now, um, the reality is that it may be a while before that actually happens. And this BYD battery equipped version is a great alternative for now. And this is a variant that I'd love to see sold in the United States at some point in the future as well. As I mentioned in the intro of this video, I personally now believe that um, Tesla's future success and Tesla reaching somewhere around 20 million vehicles being manufactured per year by 2030, I don't believe that now requires uh, Tesla to mass produce their own 4680 batteries. As I'll talk about later on, I do believe Tesla will be successful and I'll talk about some of my predictions near the end of the video. But nonetheless, Tesla has been diversifying and relying on more and more suppliers. And for instance, the Tesla Semi is a great example of this. Originally, the Tesla Semi was supposed to be equipped with 4680 batteries, but once again, due to a slow production ramp, the current Tesla Semi trucks in production right now do not have 4680 batteries, as Elon Musk confirmed in a past investor conference call. And instead, while unconfirmed by Tesla, the Semi is very likely a equipped with 2170 batteries. When it comes to the Cybertruck and 4680 batteries, um, production of the Tesla Cybertruck is supposed to happen later on this year, and this vehicle is going to require a large amount of 4680 battery cells, not only due to having an assumed 100 plus kilowatt hour battery pack, but also due to all the demand that Tesla has for this truck. Tesla has been attempting to get their own 4680 internal battery supply to a ramp ahead of the production of the Cybertruck, as Drew Baglino has mentioned in the past, so they would have enough batteries to build the Cybertrucks. However, even the Cybertruck may have to rely on outside battery suppliers as well if Tesla is unable to get their own internal 4680 battery production to a level that it needs to be to be able to reach the kind of production numbers they want to with the Cybertruck. As I've reported in the past, LG Energy Solution and Panasonic both have plans to manufacture their own 4680 batteries, which according to an article published on electrive.com in March of this year, quote, according to an agency report, Panasonic and LG Energy Solution are to supply the 4680 cells for the Tesla Cybertruck. But the question is, what kind of capacity can each of these battery manufacturers deliver to Tesla? How many 4680 batteries can they supply to them? and when will they be ready to supply them? Well, according to an LG Energy Solution press release, um, they're expanding at their Ocheng plant and they're installing nine gigawatt hours of annual 4680 manufacturing capacity. And this press release made it clear that they plan to start mass production in the second half of 2023. When it comes to Panasonic, according to this Inside EVs article that was published in June of last year, at Panasonic's Wakayama Japan factory, they planned serious production of their own 4680 batteries there to start sometime between April 1st of 2023 and March 31st of 2024. And it was rumored that the capacity they're installing here would be enough to build 10 gigawatt hours per year fully ramped. Panasonic is also building out a battery factory in Kansas here in the United States. And while from what I have read, um, that factory will initially build 2170 batteries. I believe if 4680 production goes well at their Wakayama facility, I believe it's very possible they'll install 4680 capacity at this Kansas factory as well. But nonetheless, if LG Energy Solution and Panasonic are able to collectively produce 19 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries per year and supply those to Tesla, if the Cybertruck, for instance, has a 150 kilowatt hour battery pack, that would be enough to build over 126 
thousand cyber trucks with that battery pack size and this would be a good supplemental amount that could help ease the pressure on tesla and give them more time to ramp up their own internal 4680 battery supply and if tesla can build 20 to 30 gigawatt hours of their own internal 4680 batteries for the tesla cyber truck for instance in 2024 that plus what panasonic and lg energy solution will likely be able to provide would actually probably be enough for that year. And that would allow them once again, more time to ramp up 4680 battery production without hampering their Cybertruck sales too much. In order to illustrate just how much Tesla relies on outside battery suppliers, I went through and looked at several key pieces of information. And here are my estimates for Tesla's battery supply mix and the numbers that they source from each of their suppliers, including their own internal production. Obviously Tesla manufactures their own 4680 cylindrical battery cells. Um, at their Fremont Cato Road facility and also at Gigafactory Texas. And those batteries are currently being used in the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y and 4680 batteries will be used in the future in the Cybertruck. Based on the best available information that I have, I estimate that in 2023, Tesla will build between five to 10 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries in this year. Then of course, when it comes to Panasonic, um, Panasonic currently builds 2170 battery cells at Gigafactory Nevada for Tesla. And that factory currently is able to put out somewhere around 37 plus gigawatt hours of batteries per year. And those 2170 batteries are used in the long range and performance Model Ys manufactured in the United States and the performance Model 3 also manufactured here in the United States. Tesla also buys 18650 cylindrical battery cells from Panasonic and they use those to build the Model S and the Model X. And I estimate based on the number of Model S and X vehicles that I expect Tesla to sell this year, that Tesla will buy somewhere between six to seven gigawatt hours of 18650 cells from Panasonic this year. Tesla also uses prismatic lithium iron phosphate battery cells that they buy from CATL. And these batteries are used in the standard range rear wheel drive Model 3 here in the United States, and also the standard range Model 3 and Model Y variants that are built in China. They also apparently use these lithium iron phosphate batteries in their Mega Pack products. And in the future, it's reported that these battery cells will be used in their power walls as well. This number is a little harder to nail down, but I estimate that in 2023, Tesla will buy between 50 and 60 gigawatt hours of batteries from CATL. Then of course, Tesla buys 2170 batteries from LG Energy Solution. And these batteries are used in the long range and performance Model 3 and Model Ys that are built in China and in Germany. And also based on my own personal assumption, my best guess, I'm assuming that the new long range all wheel drive Model 3 variant with 325 plus miles of range that Tesla recently brought back, I'm assuming that that vehicle very likely also uh, uses LG Energy Solution 2170 battery cells. So based on that product mix, I estimate that Tesla will buy between 30 to 40 gigawatt hours of 2170 batteries from LG Energy Solution. And then also, as I mentioned, apparently BYD is now supplying Blade batteries to Tesla uh, for the standard range rear wheel drive Model Y built in Germany. And I estimate that Tesla will buy between five to 10 gigawatt hours of Blade batteries from BYD in 2023. So as you can see, Tesla's battery supply is quite diversified now, and they don't overly rely on any one battery supplier, including themselves. But nonetheless, here we are, and based on comments from Drew Baglino in Tesla's Q1 2023 investor conference call, it looks like at the end of Q1 2023, the annualized Tesla 4680 battery production rate was just under five gigawatt hours per year. And this is a mix of their Cato Road facility in Fremont and their Gigafactory in Texas. With that being said, here are some of my personal predictions when it comes to Tesla's 4680 battery production. Obviously, Tesla grossly underestimated how difficult it would be to manufacture their own battery cells with new methods and a new form factor. While I still believe that Tesla will be successful when it comes to 4680 battery production and reaching a level of mass production, I think it's very unlikely now that Tesla will actually reach their target of three terawatt hours of batteries being produced per year by 2030. I believe 2023 will continue to be the year of working out the kinks in the production processes and production volumes likely will not exceed 10 gigawatt hours for this year between Gigafactory Texas and Fremont. I believe 2024 will be a good year when it comes to Tesla's 4680 battery production ramp because I believe by then Tesla will have worked out their engineering issues 
for their Gen 2 batteries at Gigafactory Texas. And in 2024, I believe they'll start installing equipment at Gigafactory Berlin and Gigafactory Shanghai, and also very likely um, do the expansion of their Gigafactory in Nevada and install equipment there to manufacture 4680 batteries. Nonetheless, if by 2030, Tesla is able to build one terawatt hour of batteries per year, that would make me extremely happy and that would still be quite impressive. Will they do better than that? I sure hope so. But nonetheless, I don't believe their future success relies upon it. At the end of the day, LG Energy Solution, Panasonic, CATL, and BYD will most likely continue to grow quite quickly and continue to be important battery suppliers to Tesla. I predict that LG Energy Solution and Panasonic will continue to build out more 4680 battery production capacity beyond what we know about right now. And in the future, I believe they both will be a major 4680 battery source for Tesla, not only in the near future, but for the longer term. Once again, I wanna reiterate that I do believe Tesla will be successful in the long term with their 4680 battery production ramp. However, even if they're not able to overcome their current challenges, I believe they have ensured their own personal success by building great relationships with the various battery suppliers that they buy from right now. I'd love to hear from you what you think about all this in the comments section below. So please leave a comment there. And also I want to say a special thank you to all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up and how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.